Hello. Hello. Welcome to Hi. session 17 of uh, Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi. I probably yelled way too loud for that. Hello. My friends. Hello. Ah. Hello, Dennis. Hello. Hi. Oh, <gasps> De <laughs> Dennis. Thank you. <laughs> Being nervous is okay, says Dennis. But hi, hello, how has your week been? Cold. Because it's snowing here a lot. <laughs> it cooled off quite a bit here too, but I haven't gotten any big snows yet. Hi, Freezy. I haven't had snow yet. Probably won't see any till next year. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. Uh, I can send some over if you want, Dennis. Maybe yeah, you, you do that. I'm yeah. done for that. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for Christmas, and then you can take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It's been, it's been a um, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving week for the Americans. Um, we had so much food, so much food. The leftovers can sustain us for the next month. For how many months? Yeah. All of December! Ooh. I'm, I'm watching. Do you like snow? No. Well... <laughs> <laughs> no. Alright, let's jump right in. Uh, today's summary will be provided by... Ta -ta -da -da, Sid! Hello! Hello! So... For this little summary, I made a walk around. A what? what? You'll see. Okay. <gasps> he's live. Oh, he's live? All right, let me set it up. <clears throat> uh. Oh. What? Okay. Do I need to um, mute the music for this? There is no sound. Okay. 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 Are we all ready? Almost. Yes. Um. <laughs> yeah. The <DM> is not. <laughs> Assume yeah. that she's putting it up on stream. Yeah. All right. There we go. Okay. What? So. What? <laughs> we left off meeting this werewolf wolfman and he was quite upset with us he <laughs> said not Whoa. today not tomorrow he will be back <laughs> for us and uh then brooke's like hey we probably should just let him go right that's probably bad news but then we just let him go <gasps> what? what and then uh we uh go to vera and we tell everyone hey there's something spooky in the forest look out and then we head off uh, and then we gather our belongings and we begin a week long journey towards Aria. What? And then we are on our day one or day two, I don't remember, when we meet a half orc uh, walking from Erica saying, Hey, there's this priest that lost her powers. You ever heard anything similar? And we're just like, Ah, oh, maybe, I guess. <laughs> and then we keep on walking. <laughs> And then at the crossroads, uh, we meet this old oh. lady who says we need to follow the river towards the cave. And then we make a little fire. Talix did a very good job. And we give her some food. Her name's Raquella. And then, you know, we could have gone north or south, but we just sort of had to do the forest for some reason. <laughs> And then we're just like, hey, there's probably no river here, right? And Talek's like, yeah, there's a river. I know it's probably south of here. And then Pontifex is like, yeah, this cool map I got probably says uh, that we should go south. <laughs> but then Jamal's like, no, I smell things because I'm a book. So we should keep <laughs> going. And Raquel's like, yeah, I agree with the book. <laughs> 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 and then we get to the river. <laughs> Uh, oh, that, that was a little too early. Uh, hmm, that, let's ignore that. <laughs> and then Brooke is like, hey, I'm going to throw Dagger into water, and then the water is going to rise, and it's pretty freaky. And Pontifex says, something is coming. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
And then uh, Talix and Brooke has a little bonding moment, and their <laughs> social rank goes up. <laughs> 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 and then Tekka traps some water, I guess. That's cool. And then, yeah, we get this little moment where Kala's saying, Hey, there's this witch who's doing all of this. Oh, no. And it's totally not me. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get some distance, walk away from the spooky spirits guarding the river, and we make our plans. The end. Wow. Creating using Bipsy. <laughs> yeah. Sponsorship win. Thanks, Bipsy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh that is my awesome. gosh! Well, that That's was so fantastic. cool. Uh, okay. Wait a one Remember whenever you like kind of lowered the bar a little bit again? That's gone now. <laughs> I'm a, a whole pixel game. Oh yeah, my goodness! That was amazing, Sid. Hell, <laughs> I hope Holy you like it. Crap. Oh. <laughs> All right, that was absolutely delightful. Um, here's right. the inspiration, uh, and since I already have two. Um, yeah, I got oh, two. Let him have choose. three. <laughs> no. Who who can I give inspiration to at this point? I shouldn't have this inspiration. Uh, Just saying. Then I guess you Brooke shouldn't. gets the inspiration. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Here you go. Man, we should oh, use wait. some of these. <laughs> where, where did this come from? We didn't delete it last time because it got lost in the table. Oh, that's the one. Yep. That's the one we lost, okay. All Thank right. you, Sid! No problem. <laughs> wow! How did okay. everything go so wrong with so much inspiration? Somebody <laughs> tell me, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me bring uh, your minis back. River, here we go. Uh, all of you had been sucked up into this battle map, but you're, you're back! <laughs> <clears throat> I just hang on. I want to say again that was amazing. That, yeah, that was so really good. was. Hmm. It's pretty easy to use. If you ever feel like making a summary using that tool, then I'd recommend it. It doesn't take that long, honestly. So. Hmm. <coughs> nifty. Can you upload really cool. custom sprites? No, you cannot. Damn. Sorry. Hmm. <laughs> Outland has got a Ladaria game coming fourth quarter, twenty twenty three. <laughs> Delayed indefinitely. Do <laughs> my RPG maker skills. I don't have any, but I could make some. It might be a board game. It might be a board game. I was about to say. It might it's even be a D and D game. Or it might be some oh. uh, strange bit of abstract art. Uh, that is but right uh, now. And a uh, small thing to add in, just because it might become relevant in the future, and it hasn't come up until this point, that uh, Pontifex apparently can talk to elementals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, might be relevant. <laughs> we've, yep, we've, uh, we made a discovery last time. Uh, it didn't help a lot, but maybe one day. <laughs> but yeah, we, but we, we didn't we hear it out loud, right? It no, because it was brain just telepathy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he did say it out loud <laughs> trying to talk to Raquella. And she oh, that's no right. Idea what was going on. But yeah, I guess I you guys wouldn't know that he even talked to elementals. But he did say that he talked to it and like spouted some information mm -hmm. that he seemed pretty confident about. And he's not the type to just like blurt speculation. Is he? <laughs> yeah. Is he not? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like to say, you know, matter of factly. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah, last last we were last last. I got this. Last we left off, uh, you had just escaped from strange water beings that dwelled in the river. The cave that Raquel uh, was taking you to uh, shouldn't be too far ahead. And what if what she said is true, there will be a witch waiting inside. You're all gathered a short distance away from the river um, after running away from those creatures. And um, what would you like to do now? Uh, I, so, did we agree to rest up and prepare? I yes. believe a short rest. rest and planning was the okay. goal. Yeah. All right. Well, the first thing I'd like to do is roll my hit dice. Same. Okay. Go ahead and take your short rest. Um, get that sorted. Squeak rolls a d6. 
hit dice. Wow. <laughs> that is nice. So tiny. <laughs> He's small. <laughs> He's very small. <clears throat> One dice did the trick, though. Um. Helps when you know you have less HP than Talix. <laughs> As he rolls with a negative one. Mm -hmm. Talix, you can roll a hit dice and recover zero HP. That's so refreshing to see. I I think there's a minimum of one. Maybe? I was about to, to say. To um... Maybe. I don't know. I've never run into that rule. I don't know where you keep track okay, of hit resting. dice. I might just write it Short on the resting, table. Short resting, minimum of yeah, zero. Yeah. Oh, minimum, of minimum of zero. <laughs> so you wow. can't kill yourself by resting. <laughs> That's pleasant. Like short rest, and then you can check it. Yeah, oh, yeah there it you can literally spend your hit dice and get nothing out of it. Incredible. <laughs> oh, okay. Ow. Okay. Um... Is everyone ready? I am. Yeah. Uh, is it Jason? Yes. No, I just didn't update it on here. Yeah, well, that yep, that's what I was looking at. And the squeak is also ready. Squeak is so ready. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. The, um, for like the first half of the rest, uh, Squeak was just in rat form going, Oh, my wing! <laughs> oh, my wing! <laughs> so, whatever we're against is some sort of user of magic powerful enough to do that. Or are we still all together on this? Clearly, whoever is doing this is a threat to the people here. This is a river. This is a, a valuable resource that the people may use, travelers along the road, and if they cannot do so without becoming accosted by elementals, this needs to be addressed by someone, and who better than us? Okay. Just, um... We might be able to reason with her, so perhaps it is best we deal with it and not the gnomes. Just be careful. Don't, don't insult this witch, and and don't <laughs> agree to do anything for her, um, unless unless it's a good idea. Mm -mm. I would never insult anyone. I am both a gentleman and a scholar. Oh God. <laughs> oh no, she's a woman. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. He's gonna tell her to smile. How about you, Rockella? Have you? Uh... Do you remember anything about her? Um. Okay, let me. Let me. Yeah. Hmm. She shakes her head. I. I think I might be be able to recognize her, but that's. That's all I have. Brooke, have you ever handled anything like this? Of a witch? Or elemental? A witch. I actually have not. So... There is nothing I know about this, at least for now. But I also agree that we should at least check it out. We don't have to arm her or come with bad intentions, but just ask her what's going on. Maybe it's like a misunderstanding. Hmm. Right? That is the hope. Worth a try. But if things go wrong... I mean... I think you can handle it. <laughs> me... Me by myself? Mm. Well... All of us, but, you know, you're the, the warrior here. 
I mean, I'm not sure. It will definitely depend on the witch, right? And if she is actually all by herself. <clears throat> like, one person by herself is different than one person and multiple water elementals, right? So definitely approach every single scare. Be careful of what you're going to say to her. And, um, and don't touch anything. Hear that and listen to what Pips... Don't touch anything. Okay. If it comes to a fight, we've already lost. I mean, we're not looking for a fight, right? Right. All right. Okay. Uh, Raquel pulls herself herself up to her feet with her uh, makeshift walking stick, uh, and uh, she resumes leading you upstream. And uh, eventually, after about 15 more minutes, uh, you come within view of a tall hill um, that is almost sharp enough that you could uh, you could you could almost call it a small cliff. And the river emerges from a cave on its side. Uh, if you wanted to enter the cave, you'd have no choice but to wade uh, in the water. Um, if you were to, to stick to either edge of the river, the water likely wouldn't rise past your ankles, but uh, um, the idea of getting your boots wet wouldn't, is not really your main concern. Uh, um, as you can see, even from a distance, two of the same water beings that you fought earlier. Uh, one is the snake-like one, and the other is the more shapeless one. Um, that just rise up from roughly the middle of the river at the cave's mouth. Um, so imagine... Let's see if this draws, yeah. Imagine that this is like the entrance of the cave, so this part is actually um, not exposed to the air. And you guys are, are arriving from the south, which is here. And the river leads into the cave? Mm hmm Okay, is there like a walking path like on either side of it into the cave? There isn't a walking path. Um, you'd have to step into the water. Like it, 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 it feels right all the way up to the edge. Mm, okay. Uh, so I have a climbing kit now. Grid. If we uh, want to stay out of the water, be slow going. Have the? Does it seem like the guardian is like taking note of us and just isn't moving towards us, or does it seem like he hasn't noticed us? Rule of perception check. Just to see how like, overtly aggressive this thing is. I'm sure it's not going to let us get close without. Just as long as it's not like uh, leave its post and kill anything in sight. Okay. Um, so these two, in particular, the one that doesn't really have a very defined shape, uh, it's a little hard to actually tell where they're looking, which way they're turned, because like when you when you look at them, especially from a distance, uh, with the water being for the <clears> most <throat> part uh, uh, clear, uh, it's just very hard to make out their their. Uh, their overall shape and direction, but uh, it seems like they're facing towards you. And although um, they're not coming closer, but they're just standing their ground. Um, it just looks like they're protecting the entrance to the cave. Yeah, I can uh, try to talk to it, but I have to be a little closer. Ah, and uh, additionally, I rolled. 19, yeah. Uh, additionally, you can tell that uh, uh, these are not just the same kind as the ones you fought before, but the exact individuals you fought before. Uh, you can see the, the part where one of the, uh, the snake's tentacles uh, uh, has been injured. Um, and the, the smaller one is the one that uh, um, took the most damage out of the two. <clears throat> what do you mean you can talk with them? I mean, I know the language and uh, well, I can talk to things' minds directly. Oh, yeah, true. I, I spoke to it earlier and I spoke at it and I got the vibe that it was not interested, but. I mean, we don't really have to get in, right? We, you could, if, if they don't let us in, you can ask them for to bring the witch out. Right, that is the thought, is instead of. Uh, 
I don't know, maybe mention to bring us to whoever summoned you or alert them to our presence, something of that sort. And if it doesn't, well, then I don't think there's anything lost on the attempt. We I'll just deal with it accordingly. But I do have to get closer so it may agitate it. We'll come with you. I was about to say you could do your thing you did with the gnomes again. Tell us. <clears throat> I think uh, right here? Might be cool. I'm not sure that would work. Nope. You can also use <clears throat> these measuring tools if you'd like. If you need like to, to figure out I'm gonna turn is. on this grid. Nope. Grid snapping is not working. It's not? Oh, let me fix that. Ah, uh, I must have it off. Grid center. Done. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Dead. Yeah, perfect, perfect. If it's not agitated getting here, then he'll, uh, he'll talk to its mind. Um. Gimmick! <laughs> 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 Closed it. <laughs> As they're walking up, uh, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hello again. Uh, perhaps we can be friends this time. I wish to speak with uh, your summoner. You know what that is. I know you know what it is. Please just bring them to us. We wish to talk. I think Pontifex is even saying it out loud for the people around him while he's beaming it into its head. Okay, this this is Zach one, yeah, primordial. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that would mean that that to the rest of you, uh, this sounds like. I think he's speaking like to in its head with telepathy with primordial and speaking in common so the group can understand. Since that's okay. the intention. All right, sure thing. Wow, um, imagine speaking in two different languages at the same time. <laughs> you know, thinking in one and speaking in another. The creature um, visibly, <clears throat> visibly turns, uh, but stays motionless. Otherwise, doesn't come any closer and doesn't back away. Hmm. Uh. Please? Mm. Do these things <laughs> even think for themselves, or are they just bound to their orders? It is uh, it dependent on the level of the summoner, I believe. I think some of them can be autonomous, and they're summoning beings from other planes, and some of them are more of a conjuration type of thing. But uh, I'm going to assume this is the latter. I don't think this is getting us anywhere. Yeah, there is no visible reaction. So we might have to uh, deal with this thing, though. Uh, given its lack of response entirely, I have reason to believe it's not what we would call sentient. So I have far fewer qualms about just dissipating it, sending it back to the plane from whence it came. <clears throat> just keep in mind that if we just... Uh attack it and then want to meet the witch afterwards we will already be off to a bad start if there is any other way to reach her then perhaps I can always amplify my voice to an extreme amount and hope that it perhaps echoes down the cave but I can give it a try but uh... oh, yeah go ahead me you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, he's going to try to creep a little bit closer if he can until he sees any kind of reaction. Then he's going to like immediately back up. Okay. If possible. Um, yeah, you, you're, you're going to be able to make it all the way to the edge of the water. Oh. Yeah, he's uh, cartoon creeping and it's the thing. And yeah, he'll, he'll shout in thaumaturgy. Hello! Uh, we would like to bargain! 
Your voice echoes down the cave. You wait. With thaumaturgy. A few seconds, you wait a minute. You hear nothing back. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll take I'll take a perception <laughs> check from everyone. Perception, you say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Mm. That one. <sighs> <laughs> oh no. Hey. Ah, nice. hey. <laughs> okay. Today is a beautiful sunny day. Um no it isn't, it's cloudy. What am I talking about? <laughs> I remember my, my weather. <laughs> beautiful cloudy day? I should have looked at my notes before I started talking. Uh, it's a cloudy day. Uh, the the surface of the water, uh, the water itself is clear, but it kind of reflects the, uh, the white of the clouds above. So it looks like almost foggy a little bit. Uh, but Brooke, you catch something <clears throat> almost like, almost glistening. Uh, um, that's uh, in in the river, roughly uh, like around here, um, and you just you just take a, just a, a step one step closer just to take a closer look, and it seems like there is a single uh, silver piece uh, at the bottom of the river, and then you look a little bit further to the right and a little bit further to the left, and you see there's a few more uh, scattered uh, silver pieces beneath the water surface, and even something that looks like a small uh, a small blue gemstone. Hmm. Do any of you know why people would store their money and gemstones into this river? Hmm. And I'll point at the spot where I saw the first glitz, glis, glistening yeah. silver piece. Can I make some kind of a arcana check or something to see if the blue gemstone may be connected to these guardians? Sure thing, yeah. Uh, arcana would would do it. Are these uh, are these Plurnan silver pieces? Um, these are Plurnan the silver like pieces. A wishing wheel. And Pontifex, you're sure that these kind of evocations actually are not bound to an object? They exist hmm. for as long as they are not destroyed. The the <clears> beings <throat> themselves. So you don't believe there would be any connection. Okay. Does it look like they're making any sort of trail, or is it more scattered around? Scattered. I could easily retrieve one of them, but I don't wish to agitate this if we're not ready. Well, if anyone's going to touch the water, I'd rather it not be you, Professor. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want, I could go into the cave and see if anyone's home considered that it would be useful this would you be okay with that pip um yeah you just wouldn't be able to talk to me for a little bit or uh, at least i wouldn't be able to talk back uh hold on and pip uh snatches a lock of hair from his head just plucking it sharply out of his head and picks up the uh the telepathic stone that he got from the Lady of the Land out of his pouch, and he wraps the hair around the stone sort of in a cradle and uh, holds it out in front of him, sort of like seeing who will take it. I figure Pontifex and Talix are the farthest away. Yeah. All right. I'm I was take. waiting on Brooke. Okay. okay. Uh, Brooke, you hear in your mind. Uh, can you hear me now? I respond loudly, yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. We can keep in touch that way. And uh, Pip and Squeak go a little bit closer to the mouth of the cave. And um, Pip holds out Squeak and the little rat body that, that Squeak form is in now you see the the hair starts to fall off and growing out of the body are these uh slender uh like 
uh, appendages that turn into crooked legs uh, one by one until there's eight of them as Squeak morphs into a spider. Squirt! (laughs) 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 And is going to crawl along uh, along the cave and then can crawl upside down across the roof of the cave. Okay. All right. So Squeak, um, upside down on the ceiling of the cave, um, moving over uh, over stalactites uh, with a river rushing beneath him, uh, he'd be able to see that the cave, he has dark vision, yeah, even in his form. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, that's fine. The cave continues a little bit to... Uh, uh, just straight ahead, and then bends sharply to the left. Um, and he can see through it where it's a little darker, but he can also see that there is a light uh, coming from behind the, the corner. And... Uh, um, okay. He'll also begin to notice uh, uh, beneath him uh, uh, certain objects scattered in the river. Some have sunk and some are floating. A few more coins here and there. Uh, Chunks of splintered wood. Fragments of glass. Broken candles. A chair cushion. Torn scraps of cloth. And then he rounds the corner. It bends to the left and then he bends again uh, to the right. He can see where uh, the the bend to the right is, but... um, The area around that second bend is uh, bright, and it's a it's a curious it's a curious and wonderful sight. Um, The cave opens up in a spot, and the river cuts right through the middle, leaving uh, the right side and left left halves completely dry. Um, The two sides of the cave are connected by a small wooden bridge, and uh, it's full. Of objects. A lot of it is furniture. There's a bed on one side, three wardrobes, tables and chairs, chests, shelves, and even a little kitchen area. Uh, all of it making it, uh, making this cave look like a, a nice place to live in. But what really would catch Squeak's attention is how glamorous everything is. There's countless candelabras that light the interior, each with their own unique and intricate design. The furniture is ornate, masterfully carved, and decorated with gemstones, precious metals, or fancy cloth. Uh, Though everything seems to be a bit mismatched, like nothing belongs to the same set. Uh, The stalactites and stalagmites are covered in golden chains and bracelets, each reflecting the candlelight. Uh, There's multiple large paintings, some hanging on the stone walls and some just uh, uh, leaning against them. Um, there's a pile of coins and gemstones amassed in one corner. Um, near the middle, on the right side of the river, stands a mirror, almost 10 feet tall. Even the jars that line the walls are beautiful and glistening and expensive, and despite the beauty of everything in the room, there's also chaos and damage and no discernible order or logic to the hoard. There's fragments of glass scattered across the floor, a chair that lies broken in the corner, uh, some candles are on the ground snapped in half, there's a statue that partially emerges from the river and is tilted to one side. Uh, And while some items are polished to a diamond shine, others are tarnished and uh, neglected. It takes a while for Squeak to just take it all in. Um, and at the end, he concludes that if somebody is in here, he cannot see them. Okay. Um, all the while, while Pip is seeing this through Squeak's eyes, uh, Pip is relaying this information telepathically to Brooke. And after Squeak takes all of that in and looks around and figures that no one's home, uh, he'll start making his way back. Well, he is relaying it telepathically to me. I will relay it non-telepathically to the others. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So nobody seems to be inside. That all sounds very suspicious. 
Does that mean we wait? Or... What do we do? I also look at Rakella. <clears throat> I... I don't know. But... But... Maybe we find... Maybe we can't find what I'm looking for... Inside... Uh, while she's not here. What exactly are you looking for then, if not her? I... Uh, I don't... I don't know. Um... Uh, a jar. Yes! A jar! Uh, uh... Some kind of jar. There's something inside and it... It swirls and... And it's mine! Uh, she took it from me! Can I inside check? Sure, yes, absolutely! Yeah, can I? I don't know if insight is quite as good for make like some kind of check about if there's some kind of jar. Is that like ringing any kind of magical bell? Because we've established that she's magical. I don't know um, if it'd be like an arcana or like a religion check. I'm not sure. I don't think um, any check would help you with this. Um, okay. The the Fair idea enough. of a jar is just like the generic enough. <laughs> Oh, hi, Maya. Okay. Uh, um, yeah? Before before Squeak comes back, uh, actually, could Squeak look for anything that could be, like, a considered a tiny, uh, possibly personal possession of this whatever is living here? Um, such as? Uh... I'm not entirely sure. Something like maybe uh, clothing or a small ring of some sort. Anything that looks like it might have belonged to the person living in, in this area. There's plenty of jewelry. There's plenty of wardrobes that are full of clothes. Um, each, um, each piece of clothing is uh, more beautiful <clears throat> than the previous one. Uh, the jewelry... Uh, it's all shining and polished. Well, some, and then some are like broken or abandoned them themselves and dusty. Does the clothing all look like it definitely fits the same person or is it mismatched? Which person? Oh, uh, Raquel? A person, any one person. It, these for humanoids, yes. So, so Squeak isn't finding anything that could be considered the like Definitely uh, uh, the personal uh, belongings of this person. Like, okay. It, okay, so you could tell if clothing was for, you know, for different genders, different sizes. Is it, does it look like it was just a bunch of loot taken from wherever, or is this um, all. They are. <laughs> okay. There's clothes in the wardrobes, and as far like squeak poking around, we'll be able to tell that they are they're all um, they all fit the same person. They're all for a woman, and they're all roughly the same size. Um, but there's also clothes. Some of them are mannequins on display. Some of them are folded on some chairs. Some of them are underground. Um, and many of those that are not in the wardrobes do appear to be for different kind of people, even clothes for men. Mm. Different sizes. Okay. Then Squeak will just come back. All right. Uh, Squeak the spider returns to you, hanging again upside down from the ceiling and then going across the side. Um, and safely makes his way back to Pip. So, what, this, uh, this witch is stealing things from people and hoarding all of her ill-gotten goods in there? Apparently. Or if she has made many deals, it could be like what she bargained for, right? Right, I feel that we are assuming the worst of this person. 
Perhaps they're not so malicious. It's hard to I recognize come by that the much. likelihood, but uh, <laughs> I think it is worth acknowledging the possibility that they are not this evil being that some people tend to associate to the word witch. Back in the schooling days, uh, witch is a sort of derogatory term, so... Fair enough. But it's hard to imagine coming by that much wealth legitimately. What's Rakala up to? If they are materialistically inclined, we can handle this situation without any violence. I uh, was hoping to save this for a more special occasion, but... And I think he'll, like, pull out the corner of the sequin dress. It is, has some value, and... <laughs> I don't know, maybe we could parlay with a gift. If it is to help a friend, and perhaps... Rid the road of the dangers, it is worth it. Witches don't often trade for material things on their own. I'm just trying trade, to find but... an alternative to bloodshed. More personal things. Hmm. Talg's gonna... puts his hand up to his collar. I heard Austin earlier ask what Raquel was up to. Um, yeah. she, she's listening to you guys and then sort of like she wanders off towards the river and uh, um, looks down into it and she like, she just, she adjusts her hood a little bit, recoils and brings it further back down and takes a step away from the water. Did we all see that or? Yeah, yeah. It's not like she was hiding it. What did she get out? She she didn't get anything out. She looked uh, down into the water. Like she was searching for something. Yep. <clears throat> uh, I take it. Uh, for example, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't suppose Squeak saw anything, uh, any kind of jar in there. Would have worn lots. Like he saw quite a lot. Yeah, Squeak saw a there lot was of jars. a jives. whole lot of stuff in there. Will we? I guess we have to hope she knows which one's hers. You know, Are if you... the witch won't come out willingly, perhaps I could uh, partake of a few of these shiny things in the river could get her attention. Mm. I feel reluctant to enter witch. her domain and deal with her on her own turf. Okay. Uh, but again, that is fairly hostile. Raquel, what were you just looking for? I feel like you kind of need to help us a, bit, a little bit here, since we're doing you a favor. Uh, oh, I, I wasn't looking for anything. I was just looking at myself, my own reflection. Oh. Uh. Taka, can you help me with something? Hmm. What do you have in mind, Talax? Since it seems like no one's home, we might have some time. Uh, could you help me make a raft? Hmm. I consider it the same. Let's find some trees. We gotta improve our social ranking. <laughs> let's go do let's go do menial tasks together <laughs> is there something wrong with your reflection Raquela? she nervously pulls her hood uh, further down her face uh, none of you have yet uh, all of you have yet to see what she even looks like beneath her cloak um, and she like Almost, almost shyly, uh, faces uh, to the side, uh, um, while Talix and, and Tech are like in the process of heading off. Not too, not too far off. There's trees like all around. Um, not too. Ne <laughs> <laughs> and she says, "Everything, everything is wrong with me." Did 
Did the witch do something to you? To your appearance? I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I don't think I'm supposed to look like this. What, what do you look like? Maybe if you show us, we can we can know what's going on. No, no, I can't show you. It's, it's horrifying. What if it's just me that sees? I won't tell anyone. Oh, no, no, you're going to hate me. You're going to hate me if you see me. Hey, that's a pretty strong word. <clears throat> I don't think either of us, especially not Pip, would hate you based on your looks. Look at who you're traveling with. Have you seen my face? <laughs> <laughs> a 400 year old frog, how bad could it be? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm a phantom and people are usually not too happy to see me either. Camera moves the picture on wall. The <laughs> <Pornhub> face. <laughs> uh, and the peep face. <laughs> the special <laughs> sunset. <laughs> sunset, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Michaela's head slowly turns from uh, one to the other. Pond face, peep, brook. Um, then she brings her shaky hands up to her hood, and she says, uh, Are you sure? Yeah. And um, then Pip slowly... Holds his breath. <laughs> <laughs> slowly she pulls down the hood, uncovering her face. And I'm going to need Pontifex, Pip, Squeak, and Brooke to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh no! Huh? <laughs> oh my god, it is so much worse than I ever would have <laughs> put it back on. You're hideous, revolting, begone beast. <laughs> Fireball. <laughs> There's pips. You said a wisdom save? Yes. Uh, is this magical? No. Or wait, hold on. This actually, mine doesn't actually care if it's magic or not. There's uh, squeaks. <laughs> so I get two. Everyone. Oh, I rolled a twenty-three. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, um, <laughs> as each of you lay your oh. eyes. <laughs> wait, did you did you roll yeah. twice? Yeah, because I forgot my ability does it doesn't have anything to do with spells. Oh, so it's all I was like, I would have had advantage. Throws. Yeah, it's damn. Uh, it's. Broken. Uh, intelligence, <laughs> wisdom, and charisma. Like the mental saving throws, I just have advantage always. Okay. Uh, All so right. there's a silly nat 20, I guess. Alright. So as each of you lay your eyes on this woman's face, your stomachs turn and your hearts skip a beat. Uh, Brooke and Squeak both can't help but um, move back and turn around, facing away from her, just struck by a sudden and deep and instinctive terror. Every single thing about this woman is dirty, asymmetrical, or has the wrong proportions. Her hair is greasy and sticky, one of her eyes is far smaller than the other, her teeth are rotten and crooked. Her skin is a sickly grey color, and it's covered here and there in wet patches of scales, uh, almost like those of a fish. Her black box are twisted and cracked. Uh, this woman isn't merely ugly. Her grotesque appearance simply cannot be natural. And some part of you, some gut instinct, is convinced that her outward appearance has to be a reflection of some inherent, undeniable, inner ugliness. Uh, but for all of you, after your initial reaction, your logical mind takes over and you're reminded that you stand before um, a human being, a Ledarian, it would seem, uh, whose appearance should say nothing about the kind of person she is. I vote that we drown her in the river. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you sure that you've saved the wisdom savings rope? 
I'm thinking very clearly. <laughs> with, My mind with, has never been so lucid. <laughs> with Brooke stepping back and, and Squeak hiding behind Pip, uh, just crawling down his shoulder so he doesn't have to see her, uh, she just immediately pulls her hood back up and like just turns around in shame. No, 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 no. When the devil is back down, oh god, go away! <laughs> it's horrible. I, I see. The witch must have done something horrible to you. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm sorry as well, Rakello. I I don't know, I guess I wasn't prepared enough. And Pip seems right. Might have to retract my earlier statements about not assuming malice from this being. This is cruel. Vakella sniffles and uh, um, brings one arm up to her face and just uh, uh, rubs her arm against her nose. I. I. No, I didn't always look like this. And you, you have no idea what happened? Why she did this to you? I... I remember coming here of my own volition. I came here. I just don't know why. But... Uh, that man, uh, the one with the horns... And she points in the direction where Tekka and Talix have just uh, um, disappeared towards. Something about him. There's something about him. It, it, when I look at him, I just... It hurts. It's Talix, you say? The horned, the horned one. Oh. Or Tekka. Tekka. Yes. You mean your eyes hurt, or...? My heart. My heart hurts. You know, well, I'm starting to believe that this uh, vaguely human-looking appearance is not her... Not only not her natural state, but not even her natural race. Our friend Raquel here may actually be one of these native Ladarians like Tekka. This is leading me to believe this witch is not of Ladaria. This may be something Plurnan, I don't know. Purely conjecture. Alex and Tekka, um, how is your bonding moment going? I don't know. Did we find a tree? You find plenty <laughs> of trees. Oh, we didn't have to roll to find a tree? No. Not, no. <laughs> Great. Um, I'm not sure what tools I actually have to to contribute to this. Tekka has the handsaw. He sure no. does. Yes. <laughs> you can intimidate to fell a tree. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be slow going, but I guess we'll we can do it eventually. Yeah, uh, you still get to work. Start oh, chopping. Right. You don't have to get big stuff. We just have to get a bunch of little stuff. You start cutting down some some wood, uh, and you can like bring it over over uh, the course of multiple trips. Um, is there anything you two want to talk about, or are you just getting to work? Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. With a vessel like this, perhaps we can travel down river when we are done. I suppose we could. Uh, in fact, that might save us quite a bit of time. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it sure would. <laughs> yeah, we can go right out to the sea. Just We'll have to be careful not to trip too far to, from the shore. Do you know this town? Well, your town. Is that there I do. dangerous sea life to be? Only if you get out of the bay. 
That's Ladaria in general. As I long see. as you stay close to the land, we should be fine. Not so unlike my town, then. Hmm. You, uh, you grew up near, near the sea? Mm. Yes. For all my life, I lived there, learned the sea's dangers. So, I stayed on land. Hmm. Oh, uh, you can swim though, right? Yes. Okay. I was taught. Good. Well, I'm glad to have you helping me with this. Have you built a raft before? Uh, no. But, uh... I get the concept, I think. <laughs> we just have a big enough square and tie it all together nicely. Hopefully. <laughs> Seems Me tie like a good knot. Will be a learning experience for us both then. Mm. By working together, I believe. We can do it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Do we need to make a... So, Talos can contribute up to 50 feet of rope. Mm. We'll take um, all that some rope. If needed. And the knife and stuff. Like, you know, basics. Nothing big, like... Nothing good for cutting wood, though. That's gonna be... I guess just the saw. So, uh, yeah. Um, Are we gonna have to make a roll? The two of you don't have to make uh, a roll yet. It's going to take a, a short while. Well, it's going to take a while. And, um, um, You begin to gather some wood and you begin to transport it towards the river. Uh, you do back with the group with your first part of the haul, uh, roughly at the time when the rest of the conversation you hear um, uh, has has reached the, the, the point we had gotten to before. And give me just a moment, I need to type a thing down. Alrighty. Hmm. Did you guys get a tree? It is heavy work, but we have enough trees to build a raft. I don't suppose any of you have built one before. How deep is this river? Um, not, not very. Um, the middle of it re would reach down perhaps uh, um, ten feet. Like most of you would have to swim, but like um, in, in most of these, uh, in most of the river, Brook will be able to to actually stand. All right. Uh, and the, the very stuck. edges of the river uh, are. You know, barely ankle deep. Um, Talos yeah. is going to get a few extra long sticks to use for, like, you know, uh, pushing off the bottom. Yeah. Smart. And uh, as you're gathering uh, here, and you're, uh, uh, Talos and Tech are, like, about to return to the forest and get the their second uh, part of their hole, uh, all of you hear a splashing noise. And both of these creatures, uh, submerge themselves and but you can see them displacing the water as they appear to be moving uh, in the direction you came from 
Well... I don't know if we got lucky or if someone else is in a lot of danger. I suspect it might be the letter. Um... And after a few seconds, um... You see something else. That is on the river, but it's coming towards you. Uh, you see one... The, the other... Uh water creature that you have fought earlier is coming up to meet the previous two and uh, uh, there's something following it uh, that does not look like it's made of water uh, but instead walking on the surface of the river is, uh, is a woman um, once she gets closer you can see from her white hair and white vox that she seems to be an Itara May um, her her hair is braided and it reaches uh, it has multiple braids some of them going over her uh, shoulders and some of them uh, on her back uh, her her box are perfectly symmetrical and as she gets closer and closer you can see uh, they're actually being slightly filed down and their shapes have been uh, it's, they remain into these pleasant curves. Uh, you can see her form is wrapped in expensive looking silks uh, that are red and white. And their clothes are completely dry despite uh, where she is standing. Um, she arrives uh, um, roughly... How much of a distance is this? Uh, roughly over here. And looks at your group and uh, uh, frowns a little. And for those of you who have seen Raquel's appearance, uh, um, this is pretty much the opposite of her, uh, where uh, where Raquel seems ugly in a way that that is almost impossible to conceive. Uh, this woman is exceptionally beautiful, uh, not just born um, with pleasant physical traits, but also uh, like she it takes very good care of her appearance. She glances at your group and um, there, there's a bit of a frown on her face um, and it shakes her, her head to, to herself uh, and uh, gestures at these things uh, who just sort of like await here in a line. And she addresses you and says, Visitors, what do you want? <clears throat> I believe you know this woman. Her name is Raquela. We've come on her behalf. Raquela? Um, that does not ring a bell. She comes a little bit closer. And uh, she leans forward, glancing at her. Uh, Raquela? Frozen in place. And uh, uh, as, the, as the woman just gets just a little bit closer, about 10 feet away from the shoreline, uh, then her expression turns into one of disgust. And uh, she takes a step back. It's very much what the Brooke and Squeak's reaction was uh, uh, earlier to Raquela. Um, and uh, says, Yes, I I do remember. It's difficult to forget a face like this. Are you not the one who's done this? <laughs> Me? No, of course not. In fact, um, when she came to me, she already looked like this. One of her requests was to make her better, but... I thought it was fitting for a monster like her to look on the outside just like she does on the inside. Can Squeak make an insight check on this? Uh, yeah, what is he trying to figure out? If, uh, if what she just said was really truthful and if this person is really, uh, who she says she is. Okay. Can Pontifex insight check Raquela on this specific thing? This uh, this um, reflecting inner monstrosity. What is he trying uh, to figure out? Uh, 
uh, he, trying to like get a read on Raquel's expression um, after she says that line to see if Raquel just seems <clears throat> completely clueless or caught off guard, or see if Raquel is like trying to you know hide hide it or something like. Basically, okay. trying to read if Raquel knows this is the reason. Go for it. Uh, this is. Oh God, Austin, remind me. Uh, this is squeak <laughs> or is it peep? Squeak. Okay, uh, trying to get a read on whether uh, what the woman in the river is saying is truthful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the what he gets from her um, feels like a bit of both. There seems to be some truth to her words, and there seems to be um, just brief moments where... Um, hmm. Where it feels like some words might be twisted. But overall, um, the, 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 the general feeling is that she believes what she, in what she's saying. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, you lean forward a little bit to try to, to see uh, uh, Raquel's face. She, she did bring her hood back up after you guys saw her face for like just a couple of seconds. Um, mm -hmm. So just from your position, like you even take a little bit of a, ste uh, of a step forward just to uh, try to glance at her. And uh, um, although she um, she recoils a little and she adjusts her hood so you cannot see her face, you do catch um, something with your ears, um, some sobbing from her that she's trying very hard to, to just hide. So you saw fit to do this as punishment. Might I ask, what was her crime? The woman... The woman's gaze moves away from Raquel onto Talix and away from Talix and towards Tekka. And uh, she smiles and says, None of you want to know. Especially her. That was the whole point. Well... We can't just let you use your power on people like this, at your own whims. Use my power on people? I just offer my services, and our deals are always fair. I gave her exactly what she asked for. Although, and like she seems to think about it, uh, she had turned away from you and she had stepped back towards the middle of the river and looked like she was about to just head towards the cave, but after like a step, um, she turns towards the group and says again, Unless she really wants her memories back. Talix looks to Raquel. Yeah, Raquel, that's up to you. You are suggesting that one would choose to live in ignorance? Some people are capable of unspeakable deeds, truly horrible crimes that no one would ever forgive. Some evils are universal across continents, across cultures, and monsters sometimes are exactly that, just monsters. She couldn't handle it, she had to forget. If she really has changed their mind, I would be willing to trade. And she gestures towards the cave. May I invite you in? <coughs> what would you want to trade? The woman seems to be looking at each of you, sort of like... Uh, um, like checking out what you're wearing and what you're carrying with you. Something that would, uh, um, that would be worthy of belonging to me. Something beautiful. Something precious. Something sequined. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk inside, shall we? 
She begins to move towards the cave, and then, like, after she has moved past you, it's, like, almost like she remembers uh, um, to do this. And uh, with a wide gesture of her hand, uh, the water starting from in front of Pontifex begins to freeze up on, like, a path um, that looks sturdy enough to be walked on. How far did we go with our raft? Uh, you brought in about half of the materials. You're missing the other half, and then you'd have to assemble it. It was a good workout. I don't like not having our own way back. I will continue working on this raft. Walking her way leaves us at her whim. Tekka, I appreciate that, but um, we might need your help on this. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry, Kella, but she clearly wants to trade something from us, right? Rakella has brought her hands up to her head. And she's just muttering to herself, Not a monster! Not a monster! Not a monster! You're not a monster. Objectively speaking, you're a monster at the moment. <laughs> no, Professor. <laughs> what should he say? Listen, if we go in there, there's only two rules I want you to remember. Don't touch anything! And watch what you say about people's appearance. Professor, maybe you should stay out here and work on the raft. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is okay. Um, quick from, I don't know, since you seem to have some kind of experience. Do you think if we go in and decide not to trade, we will be able to go out? <laughs> um, <laughs> you hear a squeak actually gulp and uh, say, I think that um, as long as we are kind and don't say anything stupid or insulting, then no harm will come of this situation. All right, what's our plan B? Do we have another plan? <sighs> Raquel, you were clearly deceived into this. Just... How, do you... How do you know that? No one would choose this willingly. Listen How... to the way she spoke. Listen to the way that woman spoke. I mean, we talked her into this. She spoke like someone who, who is very sure of her powers and clearly not afraid of it. That's clear. She's clearly going. She's very powerful. This is a very powerful witch. So. I don't know if we're equipped for this. We're not equipped to fight. Like I said, if we go in looking for a fight we've already lost, this isn't about fighting. Maybe we can just help Rakella. But what if... What if she asks for something I can't give her? What I'm talking about. You don't have to give it to her. It has to be... It, it has to be agreed upon on both sides. Are you sure? Yes. Hi. Do you guys think... And I look at Squeak again. If she tries some trickery with her words, then you can make it out and warn us. You don't understand. 
trickery is is what these people live and breathe on. Yeah, that's why I'm saying. I'm just saying. If you go in there, you gotta be careful. What's a blend? Okay. Well, Talix is going with Rikella. I don't know who else is going. Pip is going. Okay. Sweet I guess Pip going. Is going. Yeah, Squeak sure. is going. Okay. Although Squeak is hiding in Pip's shawl. And Tekka is staying? Tekka has tied up a log and is dragging that behind him. <laughs> okay. At the back of the back. Um, so everybody's going. Tekka is also bringing a log. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, Increase the party size. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all of you begin to move uh, uh, across. You have to be like in a in um, in a line in order for you, you can't be side by side on the ice. It's not wide enough. Uh, but you carefully step across its surface, and it seems uh, sturdy enough to um, not uh, crack under anyone's weight. Um, as you, as you proceed into the cave and you reach that first bend, you see the same things that Squeak saw. Uh, all these bits of items, uh, some underwater and some floating on it, uh, uh, on either side of your ice pathway. Uh, broken, abandoned, uh, um, or simply uh, dropped for one reason or another. And you go around that bend, uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to move your minis out of here. And delete <coughs> these drawings remember don't touch anything not even a copper piece you got it <clears throat> huh Sorry, squeak. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get rid of the grid. Oh, I saw these chairs over here at this table and thought they were guillotines. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we messed up, guys. So we should leave. Uh, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't have enough guillotines for all of us. Um, I didn't have models uh, for everything I described earlier, but uh, imagine the large mirror would be right over here. Uh, hmm. What am I missing? Well, various things. I mean, there's carpets, there's the piles of gold. Um, in fact, if you ask me if a certain thing is here, the answer might be yes. Is uh, my parents here? No. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh God! You know, surprisingly, the answer is halfway yes. <laughs> <laughs> They've both been turned into guillotines. Mm -hmm. And you make it all the way. The pathway takes you uh, to this spot, uh, and you just jump off the ice and uh, onto the, the cold uh, stone. And, uh, um, yeah, here you are. The woman <clears throat> is uh, uh, in the back near the table and is going through the shelves. Uh, there are so many shelves. Some of them are empty. Some of them have fallen over. Uh, others are brimming with books with ingredients, potions, bottles, empty, full, um, items, jewelry, all kinds of things. S some um, very well taken care of, polished, glistening, um, others uh, fallen over, dusty, broken. Uh, as you step away from the ice and onto the ground, uh, some of your boots uh, occasionally uh, you hear crunching uh, beneath the soles. As you step on broken glass or other bits 
of broken things. Uh, then the woman turns towards you, as you would uh, be roughly around here. And uh, she is holding uh, a jar. And inside, you see something kind of looks like smoke, uh, swirling, white, uh, moving as if there was wind reaching uh, within. And as she holds it and you look at it more, you start to, s this to see some shapes in that smoke. Uh, faces, places, things, uh, a building, outside, inside, um, and then colors. And after only a few seconds, um, she almost playfully uh, brings her hand behind her back, uh, thus hiding the container from view. Memories. She waits, and eventually R R Raquel just says, That's it. It's mine. Well then, if fair is fair, can't you just reverse the trade? Take back whatever it is that you gave her? I mean, I'm gonna assume that just depends on the trade and deals I made, right? It just so happens so that both of us were quite satisfied with what we got. I don't intend on giving it back, but I could still trade for something else. Would you have something in particular in mind? Things you are especially attracted to? She brings her uh, empty hand to her chin. Uh, she taps the tip of her box. Um, you know, like, sort of like fake thoughtful expression. Like, she isn't actually thinking about this. It's more like she's mm -hmm. just uh, uh, almost like messing around. And she looks at Pontifex in the eyes and says, What do you think would fit me? What do you think would fit my home? And I need everyone to roll an inside check. Damn. Pontifex, um, <clears throat> this feels like a test. It feels like, um, you can't afford giving a wrong answer. Why would one such as you assume that I would presume to know what fits you? Ooh. You have eyes, I... don't you? Look around. Touch I do. nothing, of course. But they are old, and they are aged. And they have seen too many things to put any more value on them. I am an old man who has dedicated his life to study. The desires of other people is not my strong suit. Asking questions is my strong suit, and I find that most people know what they want. They are sometimes unwilling to share it. She frowns and she points at Talix. Then you, you're younger. Your eyes work just fine, don't they? What do you think? I suppose as long as you're taking something that... that we'll miss, you'll be happy, won't you? I don't Is care how you feel about your items. What matters is that they're good for me. Hmm. As I said before, we have narrowed it down. You would like an item. So you collect memories. How many of those do you have? I do not collect memories. 
The memories were not the payment. This is what she wanted me to do. And she brings the jar back in front of her. She wanted me to take these away from her. And you so before, graciously accepted her request, granted her desires for nothing in return? Oh no, she did have to pay. Rakela. I'm gonna ask in, uh, in a turn. Is that you? Is that your body? Raquel stares at the woman. Um, you can't see it, but her eyes are wider, and you can see her hands shaking. Um, she begins to sort of like lift a hand up, almost like to to point at her, but she doesn't finish the gesture, and her arm slumps back uh, along her side, and she says, "I don't know." Did the, uh, did the witch react to my speech in Itarn? She did turn her head. She looks like she understood you. Hmm. She says nothing, though. If anything, your expression is, um, just curious. You like it awfully bright for living in a cave. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is. Everywhere I go, I bring this beauty to the world. Would you like to add to it? Have you brought me something? I don't think that anything I could bring you could add to your beauty. She smiles. She seems she seems uh, content to hear this, and then she addresses Brooke. What about you? Any of your possessions that would fit in here? <clears throat> he looks around. As you adjust your position, you can still feel the the pieces of glass. Uh, Cracking beneath your boots. It's the only sound in here, besides the rushing of water. I'm gonna be honest, I've never been a man who lived in a home for a very long time. So, everything I carry on me is of refuse for me on the outside, not inside a cave. So I'm not sure if I could add anything that would actually improve this place. <sighs> then what about you? You, in the back. She points at Tekka. Do you bring me something worthwhile? Something beautiful, glowing, bright, reflective? Sequin. I have nothing right to offer you. I, <laughs> All right. Um, I you know who does? Something. Then she pauses, looks at Talix. I This was given to me raised. by. Uh, this was given to me by. Uh, well, a collector of bright, shiny things. Of course, the judgment will be yours to make ultimately, but I at least could offer it to you, and uh, if you appreciate it, you can let me know, right? She just her position a little bit, turning more to face towards you. Show okay. me. 
Talix will take out the uh, the Crystal Castle. Okay. Let me look at it again. I've yet to determine where this uh, where this originates, but it must be from somewhere here in Ladaria. I found it quite interesting myself. Her eyes widen in recognition. You got it from that bird, didn't you? That's right. <laughs> she refused to give it to me. Said I didn't have something worthwhile to give her back. <laughs> well... What do you think? I think it would look lovely on my shelf over there. Although... A lifetime of memories... For something this small? I'm afraid that's not going to be enough. Perhaps... Alongside something else. Perhaps it is not the crystal castle itself that is of value, but... Acquiring something that you desired and were turned away. Dissatisfaction. Roll a persuasion check. That's gonna be, uh, let's inspiration this one. Okay. This might solve this whole problem. A 16. Oh, I was waiting for it to, to show up on the screen. Um, I don't know if it does. Yeah, I'll be taking that. The Pipspiration. <laughs> um, Talix and Pontifex both seem to have gotten their attention. Um, she glances back at the shelf where she said that the, the miniature castle uh, would fit beautifully. And uh, she's definitely considering it. Um, at the end of that, um, she shakes her head um, and says, I'll need something else in addition to the castle. But you can tell that she's like kind of like on the edge. Um, and perhaps... You could throw in something else, but smaller, and that should be sufficient. <clears throat> Was there anything else from the bird you liked? Uh, let me go look at Glimmer's inventory. What about something more personal? Something that has extreme cost to acquire? How do you feel about the gemstones? But not just natural ones. And uh, he'll reach into his back and he'll pull out uh, a ruby tooth, a ruby fang. This is a token that uh, is only acquired by taking the life of another. It weighs heavily in my pocket. Uh, is this one of the claws or one of the fangs? Uh, one of the fangs. One okay. of the teeth. You see... This thing mm -hmm. carries the wrath of a mourning husband that has lost his wife and children. And I think Pontifex is like glancing over towards Pip's general direction and then back to her. Understand that if you take this... It may have some wrath incurred with it. Not this day, not soon, but one day. A lycanthrope might be seeking vengeance for it. Must have some sort of value. You see her look at the ruby you're holding in your hand and smile. 
This will be perfect. The castle and the fang for a lifetime of disgusting, horrible memories. And I'll be returning oh, these me. to her, yes? She there just... are plenty of horrible memories attached to this one as well. Then this is a fair trade. Place your items on the table. She puts her, uh, the jar here. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> and Pontifex, you place the fang on the table, and Talix, you place the castle. Um, she looks at the items. So, um, there is just this uh, almost wicked desire in her glare. And uh, she gestures at this edge of the table and says, Come around. Come take your item. And she begins to walk in the, uh, on the other side instead. Uh, now how do we go about returning these? As she gets over here, um, she briefly glances at Raquela, who is shivering, like, almost, uh, um, in fact, uh, shoulder to shoulder with Pip. Um, she glances briefly at her and then just, uh, the dis disgusted expression comes back to her face and looks away and says, You'll just have to open it, stand in front of her, make sure she breathes it in. I think, uh, if Talix is walking over there, then he hears in his mind, uh, this is Pontifex beaming it into it. And wait, touch nothing, remember? Talix will wait for her. Okay. And uh, I assume that this is no longer one of your objects of which we are not to touch. In a moment. She picks up the I castle. I should disrespect your property. She picks up the fang, one in each hand. And then she nods towards Talix and says, The jar is yours. You may take it. All right, Talix will pick it up. It feels warm. Like the smoke inside is a little warmer than the temperature inside a cave. The woman heads towards a shelf, begins, uh, places the castle down in one of the free spaces, then she thinks about it, uh, turns it a little bit, and picks it up, puts it in a different spot. Uh, and uh, she's going to be doing this for a while. Before we put her memories back, I have a feeling that it may hurt her more to have her memories and still look the way she does. What can we do about her? <clears throat> what can we do about her appearance? You can do nothing. It's all up to her. If she were to be a better person, a good person, a kind one, a selfless one, then she would look more like me. But monsters... Well... They look like monsters. Oh, Very and... Cool. A monster is not as much of an insult as you may think. Turns around, looks at Pontifex, scoffs, and uh, she turns to face uh, Tekka, points at him. You in the back. You may want to stay away from her. That one was free advice. I'm feeling generous. Yeah. Yeah, I think just tech uh, scowls at her in return. And then she goes back to arranging the items on the shelves. Eventually, okay. she seems to find a spot that she likes for the castle. And will walk past you. Uh, onto the bridge uh, and over here uh, searching for a good place for the fang Pip gently touches Raquel's arm and just says are you sure about this? are you ready? she 
turns to face Pip. Um, she's clutching her her cloak at the at the base of her neck, uh, shivering just like the first time you met her, uh, as if cold and hungry. Um, she looks at the jar um, as if that's the only thing that could ever um, get rid of her hunger and thirst. And she nods and says, I have to know. I, I have to know. Okay. I told you, didn't I? I have someone. I have family. I, I have uh, some place to return to. I can't. All right. Say can't no more. Know. Just breathe. I think Brooke will also take like a step back towards Tekka. Alex will open the jar and hold it in front of her. And as she takes a deep breath in, uh, you all see the this smoke rise up from the jar. And uh, at first it seems to just disperse all around you. And you catch glimpses, dozens, hundreds of various scenes uh, from Rokella's life all across Ladaria, uh, surrounded by wool dogs, uh, surrounded by your people, um, having uh, uh, friends and enemies and catching food and uh, losing some of her dogs and raising others. Um, and it's overwhelming. Uh, this, this amount of information is just too much to, to receive all at once. Um, and then as Raquel breathes in, the smoke begins to... Um, begins to, to condense again into uh, a much smaller form, like what was contained initially in the jar, and moves towards her face and disappears behind the hood. Uh, she staggers backward for a moment, and then at first there is a gasp of, of pleasant surprise, and then a scream. It shakes the shelves all around you. It seems like even the, the candlelight flickers as uh, her, her scream is just piercing your ears. She brings her hands on the side of, of her head and keeps screaming and screaming in pain, in despair. And then she begins to, to, to say words. Um, at first, uh, just in, uh, in Italian. Um, and then back in common, as she says, No, 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 I didn't do it, I didn't do it! And he'd ever want to roll initiative. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. What are we fighting? Memories? <laughs> No one can fight their own past. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's okay, it's okay. I don't mind rolling a one on initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the net ones I'm taking. Uh, uh, uh. I'm seeing everyone's menus just like, boop, 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 just pop up above <laughs> all the minis. <laughs> Pillars of color erupting out of people's heads. Yeah. Okay, everyone is set up. Mm hmm. Oh, let me give her a name. Okay. <sighs> As her deafening screams are piercing your ears and you all stagger uh, back just from the intensity of her voice she turns to the right towards Tekka points a finger at him and says you it's all your fault your people your curse why 
Why did you do this to my baby? I need the tech I'm broke to roll a dexterity saving throw. Terity? Oh no. Uh -huh. so Terity. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to her baby, Tekka? <laughs> yeah, I might be siding with her. 24. <laughs> Twenty-four and fifteen from Taka. Mm-hmm. Okay. You both pass. Please give me just one moment. Okay, that wasn't particularly exciting. Um, so, there is an explosion of fire uh, in the area near you. The water in the river directly behind the two of them begins to boil from the sudden heat. Uh, everything that's made of fire, the two bookshelves over here, the remains of, of the chair, um, all catch on fire for a moment, and then it goes away. The fire didn't seem to be... Um, Real? Well, it was it was brought by magic, and so he didn't actually uh, manage to to stay um, on the objects uh, where it exploded. But the heat was absolutely real, and you both felt it. Uh, you both take fifteen points. Nope, thirteen points of fire damage. <sighs> oh. And then we go in initiative order, starting from Pip. Hey! Raquel, what are you doing? Uh, she needs to make a... Okay, Pip's gonna move over here, and then she needs to make a strength saving throw as, as Pip tries to push her away from Tekka. With his mind! <laughs> strength saving throw. Fourteen. Dang it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, she is unaffected. Hmm. Was here. Pip's just gonna keep running this way, I think, getting near Tekka. Mm. Yeah. Um, Battle music. <laughs> and? And... <laughs> action, action. People take the dodge action. Okay. Talix, it's you. You're next. That mountain's done you no harm. Talix is going to take out his focus and cast Calm Emotions. To try oh. to dissuade her from whatever is uh, whatever is eating at her right now. Okay. Try to. Yeah. So she has to make a uh, charisma saving throw. Oh, I, I don't think it matters what stat this is because I rolled very poorly. Okay. I have six. Over. <laughs> yeah, she's different towards uh, she's indifferent towards Tekken. As long as she remains unharmed. Okay, uh, let me just. Oh, the DC. Sure. The DC is uh, thirteen. Yeah, I rolled a six. Um, let me just read the calm emotions. Okay. Okay, she does not have. Yep. Okay. So you all saw that she had, uh, after the blast of fire that just exploded into the side of the cave, uh, she had started to like almost lunge in the direction of Tekka, getting caught onto the remains of the chair, uh, her old body just nearly falling over as she picks herself up and is about to head around and then she slows down and she stops. Uh, the, the anger um, in, 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 uh, in her voice uh, uh, just 
sort of fading away uh, and she catches her breath and breathes in deeply and calms down. All right. I thought I was just going to walk over and put a hand on her shoulder. Whatever hurt you endured, that man is not to blame. We helped you, remember? She turns towards uh, uh, Talix. Um, her head still, her face still covered by the hood uh, as she takes in deep breaths and says, yeah. You're right. It... it wasn't him. But... but a curse! My baby! By any chance, was your baby's father... one of my people? Um... Does anyone else want to do something on their turn? Or, um... No? Uh, how long does your common motions last? A minute. A minute. Okay, uh... Yeah, Pontifex is a... He has a, a spell in mind that he's going to do if necessary. If this common motions breaks or ends, then she goes into hysterics again. Okay. But that's really it. Um, so nothing immediately. So, but uh, I just want to know if, like, we can be out of initiative for the conversation and, you know, for the full minute of it. Uh, or... Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we'll not be uh, in initiative for that, but during the time when you guys are talking, the witch will be uh, approaching. Um, so you'll have, like, roughly, let's see, 20 seconds or so before she gets over here. Um, well, yeah, I'll move her later. Um, Raquela nods at Talix's words and, and says, We knew of the risks, but uh, we didn't think it was real. We thought, we thought we could have a child and, and it would be normal. The, the pain you're feeling... That's the same pain that that man feels every day of his life. Shouldn't put the blame on him. Then who is doing this? Who is doing this to our children? Curses come from people. Somebody's doing this. Oh, she just kind of looks at Tekka. <laughs> for a bit. No, no one knows. Is it actually a curse? Or is it just what happens when two different races get a baby? Oh. Because obviously there are other instances of this before. You know, we had that in Pluna as well. The woman rushes past you guys, um, nearly like, trying to move Brooke aside, but she doesn't really have the strength for that. So she like bumps into him and goes around, and she uh, completely ignores the conversation. She's just over here to check uh, the the state of her shelves. Uh, Talix um, looks up real quick. Were these damaged? No. Okay. Not that you can see. But, like, she's just, like, pulling out various books one at a time, um, going on the side, checking on the, um, like, o on the sides of the shelves beneath them, on top of them. Um, just very carefully making sure that there is nothing out of place. Um. Hmm. Hold on a second. Ah, I have misplaced one die. Here it is. Raquel shakes her head, um, looks at uh, uh, Tekka in the eyes, uh, and repeats, Curses come from people. Well, they don't come from him. You're right. 
Metallics, you can feel that uh, uh, your spell is just about to run out. Okay. You're right. It's not his fault. Queen. It wasn't my baby's fault. Okay. How about we take this outside and uh, Talix going to try to gesture to Pontifex. Uh, Pontifex, you can tell his like, expression is a little blank. He is counting down from 60 in his head. <laughs> Uh, and is like a little on edge. Okay, he's gonna wave Brooke over too. All right, now we're gonna take you outside now, okay? <laughs> and we can okay. talk about this more. But you'll we'll have to down stay to five. calm. All right. I'll... May we take your arms? She holds out a hand towards Alex. Okay. And then you see. Alex will the expression on her face uh, from beneath the, uh, the hood and it changes into one of pain and anger and an italics roll a wisdom saving throw can I cast my spell as the as his timer hits 60 you absolutely can I can't react to this this is uh, you seeing her face oh I see She's not doing anything. A wisdom save. And Pontifex would use your spell. She also needs to make a wisdom save. Okay. A DC 13 wisdom save. I'll be using my inspiration. Alright. Wisdom. Oh my god. I have a natural one. Ooh, <laughs> mother fuck. This is, uh, <laughs> this is him casting command and he is just saying regret. Try to con replace this anger with sorrow and sadness. It's much more easy to deal with a depressed person than an infuriated person. Ah. So he's commanding her to regret, to regret her actions, however she wants to interpret it. Okay. Uh, Talix, for the first time, you see what's beneath Raquel's cloak, and it's horrifying. The way the witch has been describing her doesn't even begin to encompass just how impossibly terrifying her appearance is. Um, you are just... you can't help it. You turn around, you move away from her uh, quickly. Like you're in the presence of, uh, of something just dangerous, like a wild beast. Um, mechanically speaking, you are frightened. Hmm. Um, and you fail to, to catch the, the hand that she was offering you. But you do see that the anger on her face, um, for a moment, is just replaced again by that sadness. It came and then it went away. Uh, as command lasts six seconds. Do I just, see? Uh, do I realize any of that? Uh, realize what like knowing what happened to me when i looked at her oh yeah yeah uh, yeah absolutely can i grab her hand you can yes cool uh let me just let's just go quickly in initiative um so the spell ends on Raquel's turn, the, um, the calm emotions. Um, then Pontifex casts command, and then we'll be on Tekka's turn. Is there anything he wants to do? That's difficult. Yeah, I don't think player or character has an answer to that. <sighs> Take your time. For now, I think it just sits on the log. And okay. kind of... Yeah, kind of just dealing with the after effects of that fire blast. 
All right. Uh, in that case, we move on to the witch's turn. Um, who finally lowers her hands from the shelf and uh, almost as if realizing you guys are still here. Um, she looks at the woman at her back, uh, um, an expression of disgust again returning to her face, and uh, she says, Oh, just tell them. Tell them what you did to your own child. Brooke, it's your turn. Um, I would probably grab her arm and then move into like a soft headlock and try to move her like into this direction. But okay. her looking down instead of like at others, that's what the headlock is supposed to achieve without trying to hurt her. Okay, let's make this a grapple check. Um, and let, you can roll it at an advantage as she's uh, to, to some degrees incapacitated. In the middle of regretting things. Is grapple strength or dexterity? Uh, you roll athletics. Oh. If you're the one doing the, mm. the grapple. Yep. Disadvantage, you said, right? Mm hmm. Well, I could have rolled her as a disadvantage. Eh, it doesn't matter. Oh dang, yeah. Um, I am. I rolled actually kind of okay, but I definitely am not beating that. Um, so unsurprisingly, for someone like Brooke, it's just really easy to grab uh, an old woman. And honestly, you could even pick her up if you wanted to. But uh, you're you're being somewhat gentle. Uh, you can move. You can move half of your movement uh, towards the bridge with her. All right, then I'll do that movement and say, all right, let's get out of here and then have a proper talk. And half my movement is 30 feet, 15 feet mm -hmm. means 5, 15. Mm -hmm. I don't know what should be. I will. I don't know. I, that is fine. Yeah. Okay. Pip. What would you mm, like to do? Just, uh, just staying with Tekka for now. Talix? I can't... How long am I, uh, affected by fear? Um... Well, for this round, you will have to move away, and then you get to re-roll, uh... The Wisdom saving throw. Um... Okay, uh, so I have to run oh, into the corner? Me, hold on, let me read this. Yes, yeah. Uh, <laughs> your time you're out moving away from out. her. <laughs> um, and you just you just can't help it. Uh, you're, you're pulling down your own hat in an attempt to uh, reduce your field of vision, and you just run away from what you saw. I can roll another wisdom saving throw. And the first stops the oh, hey. And then after a few seconds of this, you just take a deep breath and uh, you're you're back in control of your own thoughts and um, you're starting from next turn, you may... Well, you're free of uh, the frightened condition, so you will be able to just act normally. Uh, is Squeak up to anything? Um, how high is the ceiling in this cave? Uh, it reaches up about 30 feet. It's um, not very level. There is some places where it's further down to 20. Uh, and there's plenty of stalactites uh, uh, all over. Okay. Um, I don't think he's going to do anything other than uh, if if the witch is, is perceptive enough, then she'll notice uh, Squeak give her like a, a glare just as a rat. Mm. That's it. She smiles at Squeak. Um, this is where the effect of command uh, um, would fade. Yep. 
Um, I have lost the pages. The, the page I was looking at. Hold on, where is it? There it is. Okay, grappling rules, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, do not prevent the casting of spells, as far as I can tell. Correct. Uh, restrained would if it requires somatic, but that's the only difference. Mm -hmm. and grappling does not restrain a target. Yeah, not at um. all. Okay, uh, Brooke, you feel the woman that you're... you're uh, that you're dragging, uh, begin to to kick and uh, uh, try to, to wiggle herself free. Um, and uh, she she tells you to let her go, and she like bends her head as much as she can, trying to sort of like reach you with a free hand. And I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Hmm. Four would Maybe be a failure. Good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. And as she, as Raquel tells you uh, to let her go, um, to... Hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, as she demands that you let her go, you feel your grip on her uh, grow weaker. Um... You are charmed by her, uh, which simply means you see her as a, as a friend, um, a friend to to be helped and to be protected from harm. Yay! Um, all of you, it's like Raquel ordered Brooke to let her go, and he just complied. Um, and as she moves away from him, he just allows her to go. Brook is very polite. Brook is <laughs> polite. Uh, he sort of like scrambles to her feet, picks up the staff that she dropped earlier, uh, just pulls herself up. Uh, not staff, it's just like a walking stick. It's not a magical thing. Uh, and then we move on to Pontifex. What are we going to do about her? Uh, okay, Pontifex is going to... Do it. Let me make sure I saw the feature I didn't use. I haven't. Cool. Uh, I'm going to use my my feet thing to cast Detect Thoughts. Uh, is this to a single creature? I believe so. Read the thoughts of certain creatures. You can focus your mind on any one creature. Yeah, uh, he is doing detect thoughts on Raquella, and is like immediately trying to push further. So she needs to make a DC fourteen wisdom save. Nine. So she fails. Uh, so he gets the surface. <laughs> And he gets to probe deeper. Uh, if it fails, I gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state, and something that looms large in its mind, something such as something that it worries over, loves, or hates. Uh, questions. This is the, the key part that I'm about to do. Questions verbally direct at the target creature naturally shape the course of its thoughts. So the spell is particularly effective as part of an interrogation. Mm -hmm. uh, so once he, I guess, is getting some thoughts and digs deeper to, to think about what's happening, uh, I think Pontifex gets in the way. Maybe even a lot closer. Actually, I think he gets right up in her face. Uh, and I think he's just saying, What can we do to help? What are you hiding? The moment the spell takes hold, 
um, in the initial few moments when you've just cast it and you're just seeing what's a, a just her surface thoughts, um, the witch had just told her um, to tell you um, what happened to her child. And the, the first few images that come to your mind from hers are uh, of, of herself looking down at a baby in her arms, uh, a newborn. Couldn't be more than, uh, no more than a few hours old. Um, and you can feel the warmth of her, of her own tears as they fall down her cheeks and fall onto the child. Uh, and the moment you probe deeper, you're overcome by this anger and this sense of shame. Um, and you can see yourself, uh, her, uh, in, in her memories, but you see it from her point of view. Uh, you see a bloodied knife in one hand, and for a moment you see the remains of... Uh, of something too young to die. And you sort of reel back from uh, the shock of that vision. And you, you feel her own pain and you feel her own shame, but also you just mainly feel that, that anger. Um, the realization that you are a monster and sort of accepting it. Uh, in this string of memories with the baby, was there anything in particular about... I'm, I'm assuming this is alluding to she has killed the baby herself. Not only is there no doubt in your mind, but the next um, thought, the next memory that comes to you is uh, of uh, her own husband suffering the same fate. A plurian man his life taken. By her? Mm hmm And they are exhibiting Tekka-like features? The... The child is. Hmm. They were uh, almost hidden in that memory. Like, there was cloth around the head, uh, but you could see, like... Something just, you know, poking on both sides uh, through the cloth. Mm. And you can, okay, you didn't yeah, see uh, it, but you could feel it from the memories. Sure. Uh, then I think as he, like, you know, saying that, what are you hiding? Uh, and then he gets, you know, swarmed with all of that. I think he, like, cuts himself off mid-sentence and says, uh, Ah, I see. And, uh, I think he tries to, like, um, from the memories, was the knife in her right hand or her left hand? Her right. I think he's going to try to reach out towards her right hand and try to, like, hold that hand. If I can. Um, hmm. I don't know if that's an action or something or if this yeah, is Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, because usually, usually, like, physically interacting with someone... Like, you know, pushing and such are all grapples. Okay, um, maybe he's just holding his hand out towards hers. Okay, yeah. Cause, like the, cause... the upward palm, like the give me your hand motion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he did this. That's enough. I know what happened. You can stop. I think Pontifex is actually crying. Roll a persuasion check. Do you want inspiration? Uh, I already used it. That's why I asked if you want inspiration. Oh, we can do that? I mean, we have before, right? Um, we have. Uh, I mean, if you're willing. This, yeah. This might hopefully solve the situation. I'm offering. If that's okay, okay yeah. with Windsor, then... 
Go yeah, for if it. That's okay with the DM. This seems like the perfect thing. What is that? A uh, fifteen. read on the spell one more time um so when you when you probe deeper into someone's memories they know yeah uh, uh let me look if it succeeds the spell ends either way the target knows that you are probing unless you and unless you shift your attention to another creature the creature can use its action on its turn to make a check to to end the spell but yeah she's she's aware of what has just happened okay um all right, so she would understand that, like, you got, you understood what she had on her mind at that moment. Um, right, right. And the the sudden appearance of tears and lack of hostility is probably a, a good indicator of what he saw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. The rest of you see as uh, um, Raquel first brings uh, uh, one hand, her free hand, um, like, pulls it away from, from Pontifex and brings it up to her chest and clutches onto her, her cloak, and then she drops the staff uh, and jumps, drops to her knees. Uh, she resumes screaming, and it's a, it's a part screaming, part uh, crying, just the wailing of a woman uh, who has lost everything uh, by her own hand. Unless anyone has any objection, we can leave initiative. I mean, I'm charmed. Do I have to do something if I see that? Not uh, since Pontifex is not harming her. Okay. So, uh, the situation works for you. Hey. <laughs> the inspiration and the encounter broke your charm. <laughs> quote, unquote. <laughs> <laughs> Instant okay. kill inspiration. Then we're out of initiative. I think if she's like on her knees on the ground, like scream crying, I think Pontifex also like kneels down and like tries to like put a hand behind like her head and her back and like kind of press her face into his uh, into like the cloak that he's wearing just to kind of muffle it a little bit. Uh, will you help us get out of here? Please. The woman watches what's happening down here and then uh, um, she doesn't even like say anything or nod. She just turns, steps over the log that uh, Tech is sitting on and with one flick of her wrist, um, the path of ice shows up on the river again. Uh, you have everything handled there, Professor. I think, uh, I don't think he looks back. I think you just, like, see him nod. Like, you see his little hood shake a little bit. And then he says, hey, we will be just a minute. I will, uh, I will bring her out with me when she is done. I would like to have a small word with, uh, oh, with whoever. I don't know how to refer to her. With the woman. Oh. Uh, He's alluding I... to the witch. I don't know if yeah, he's yeah. doing it very well. No, she gets yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, I got it. But, um, would you like us to stay with you? Would you like me to stay with you? Uh, if you would like, but uh, I don't believe this is something that Pip should be here for. Understood. Uh, Talix will just kind of go to the others and look around and see what what everyone's doing. I think uh, even whenever he says that that Pip line, he's uh, he's going to try to send a little telepathic thing to Pip, uh, and so in his head he hears like a, a quiet professor voice, apart from his usual loud, booming, echoing telepathic, and he says. Uh, 
Last time I could not protect you. I'm going to do so this time. You should not be here. Mm. And that's it. <clears throat> then are we heading onto the path? Does Pip want to? Uh, Pip will go on the path, but uh, squeak in on in Pip's neck cloth uh, is going to turn invisible and will stay behind. Okay. As Pip is I'm like turning charmed. around, uh, uh, <laughs> you're going to be charmed for an hour, I believe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> So you're staying here to protect Raquel, then? <laughs> I guess I'll stay. It, it's, it's not even concentration, so she can't drop it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I always the one being charmed? <laughs> um, Pip, as you're, as you're like turning around and beginning to... Um, like As you move past the witch, you, you do feel her, uh, her glare on you. And a bit of a smirk on her, uh, you notice a, a smirk on her expression as you pass by her. Is Tekka leading? Oh, hesitates oh, a little bit and, and looks back and uh, I don't know. She, he's, <laughs> he's, he's just looking to her as, it, uh, as if waiting for her to say something if she's going to. Uh, you make eye contact, she smirks. And then she brings her attention back towards Pontifex and Raquel. Because I'm walking. <clears throat> Same with. Sorry, what was that, Dennis? I didn't catch up. Oh, I'm just telling you two that I'm staying here with you. What about Tekka? Tekka looks between the people within this cave then rises to his feet pushes the log onto the river and takes a seat and begins rowing using the choir staff <laughs> okay hmm. uh, Tekka with um, um, sitting on the log your feet end up in the water and you know it splashes a little bit on you as you row and you can feel that the water is unnaturally exceptionally cold um it's unpleasant but you know in the time that it would take you to actually make it out of the river um it, it wouldn't like hurt you uh but it's it, it is very unpleasant uh and the further you go from the cave the warmer the river becomes until back at the entrance it feels like a normal uh natural temperature for the water talix what are you doing uh, Talix is going to stay here and you know, just stay by the path and just kind of keep an eye on the situation. Okay. <laughs> is it possible to take a quick break? I was going to end the session in oh. uh, just over 20 minutes. Um, do you think we could just uh, uh, yeah. get to that? All right. Sure. The witch moves away from the shelves. It takes a few steps towards the rest of the group and says, My patience with her does wear thin. Make it quick. I think, I think Pontifex tries to, you know, give his little, his little sniffle to suck it up a little bit. <laughs> and <laughs> gives a, I think he gives a curl over Kella like a, like a, a reassuring pat or something on the shoulder. Just tries to like stand up and like, you know leave her, uh, and walks over like straight towards the way. And uh, as he gets there, he says, "I have glimpsed into what has happened. I have seen what." I assume you have also seen. I know what she has done. I know why you refer to her as you do. 
and while I do not condone the way that you have done this, I respect that you are a necessary evil on the path towards repentance. A necessary evil. Ah, this is what I get evil. for fulfilling her request. Exactly the way she asked me to. She remembers it now, doesn't she? She can tell you. I did she does. nothing except what she asked me to. Sure. I feel like you are on the presumption that a necessary evil is a bad thing. You are like the personification of a forest fire. You cause great trials, tribulations, stress, and death, but for a greater purpose that will serve serve everyone in the long run. I think what you have done here will serve her later down the line. And I'm wanting to express some form of gratitude for it. And I think he holds out his hand in like a handshake kind of gesture. I'm saying I understand what you have done and what you seek to accomplish. The flattery does seem to work. Um, her annoyed, almost hostile expression begins to soften until eventually she's smiling and just nodding along with Pontifex's words. Um, although she doesn't shake his hand, it's more like she, she acknowledges that he extended it uh, and does like another naughty motion and says, It's nice to be appreciated for once. Everyone comes here with demands and I do what I can to fulfill them. And yet, people always have regrets. Even when they get, when they get exactly what they want, it's still not enough. It is a case of people not knowing what it is they ask for. But, I suppose uh, I should have seen have... it coming. She asked me to take away her memories, and then she could not remember that she made that request. Although I didn't think she would rem remember to come here. That was unfortunate. Well, we do have uh, places to be, so I believe we'll be leaving now, but... Uh... Maybe just tone it back on the elementals attacking people who come close to the river, yes? You don't want to deal with the gnomes. They're not a necessary evil, they are just evil. <laughs> <laughs> they will not seek to understand. They will seek to burn this entire cave to the ground. She touches the box on her chin and nods along with what, with what you're saying and says, They are meant to protect the entrance to my cave. I suppose sometimes they do wander a little bit too far. I'll make sure to pull back on their leash. Okay, well, if you could just uh, pull back the territory a little bit, that would be much appreciated. And I would like to get out of your hair, as it were, as soon as possible. I am newly disgusted with the situation. I will remember you. I hope you will remember me too. If you ever find something that you think would fit my home, I do encourage you to bring it over. I'm always willing to trade. Noted. And I think he turns and starts to leave. Okay. Is Rakella still on the ground? Or did she stand up by now? She is on the ground. I'll offer her once again my hand. If you yeah. want, I can help you get out of here. <laughs> Unless you can do it on your own. After a few seconds, she takes your hand. You basically have to pull her up. She does not have the strength uh, uh, to do so herself. And as she leans heavily onto you, you just hear her uh, muttering against, uh, uh, against your chest. I don't want to live. 
I don't want to live. I'll sing. He puts an arm around her and then starts walking towards Zach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have to, to support her uh, in order to make yep. it across the ice bridge. Talix, you're going with? Yeah, Talix will go behind. Okay. And as you all meet up at the entrance of the cave, uh, we're just going to call the session there. Ah! Ah! Gone. <laughs> no! That was a strong one. No! <laughs> <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> Declined. I mean, like, if you want to do something very quick, we do. I do have ten more minutes, but yes. I, I figure it's usually Sad not how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Usually small conversations will still take up like an hour. Alright. As promised that it will take very little. We can we can do that now. Okay, yes. Okay. As um, soon as everyone leaves, uh Pip stops watching through Squeak's eyes um and just watches as everyone else comes through. Uh however, Squeak stays behind. Um and Squeak reappears uh, on just a, a pile of, of the wooden planks uh, that's, that's next to uh, the witch. And uh, he says, Brinewell, Brinewell, Brinewell. You've done it again. Um, she's just, she's not even going to turn to face him. Um, instead, she returns to what she was up to earlier, which was all the way over here. And Squeak can, uh, follow her if, uh, if he'd like. And, uh, she is uh, looking for a place to put the fang, uh, uh the, the, the ruby fang. And it's like, um, alongside, uh, um, on this area of the room is where she keeps a lot of, uh, ingredients. Uh, so that seems to be the way she's categorizing this particular fi uh, find. Instead of putting it alongside a jewelry and precious gemstones, so it's going over here. Uh, Squeak uh, turns into imp form and then flies over and lands on one of the stalagmites. Mm -hmm. Just perched on top of it and... Uh... Just watches for a little bit before okay. saying, What? Not even gonna say hello? I have nothing to say to you. You're the one who's staying behind. What do you want? <laughs> well, I just wanted to commend you on your uh, latest act of. Misery. The fun part is that I have to do nothing. People seek their own misery. They can't help <laughs> it. Tell me about it. Well, as you can see, I'm with the kid. Why? <sighs> oh, it's don't what, bother. Uh... I don't actually care. <laughs> do you need something from me? Or are you just here to do small talk? Did a child get to you? Nah. Just, uh... Nyla gives her regards. Does she now? And uh, with that, he'll flap his bat-like wings and fly out of the room. Okay. She lets him go. That did take less than ten minutes. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now we call oh, the, the name drops. 
Brian Well? Brian Well. <laughs> I'm guessing the witch's name. That's a good name. That's a great water witch name. Brian Well and Nyla. Ah. Bunch of demons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good session. Like that. Yeah, that was great. Yay! That was tragic. Yeah. yeah. All right, fun. D and D is fun. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> Let's do it again sometime. No, that was great. I like that. A heavy one every now and then is great. Every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've had some heavy ones, but like, shit, man. It's been three in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> this is a lot of familial tragedy. Hmm. Maybe, maybe having children in Ladaria is a rough decision. <laughs> Maybe just don't kill them. <laughs> don't love anyone, and then you can never get hurt. It's uh, worked for me that flawlessly. Is the moral. Oh. Uh, I'm glad the morals of my campaign are coming through. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, a teaching moment. Okay, well, I hope you had something resembling fun. And yeah. I'm going to let you go. Well, good. Yes. I don't know when the next session is going to be. Tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> right now. <laughs> I don't think tomorrow is possible. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll just, <laughs> uh, we'll just, yeah, we'll just get to it on, on the Discord. Uh, we'll we'll yep. find the next time and day. Dennis, reminder, uh, the next recap will be yours. And then... I have written just so make many a video notes. game, easy. I just make I've a video game. I've written so game. many notes. <laughs> Sid, make a that full was light amazing. novel. We'll have a three-hour <laughs> playthrough, and that'll be the session. And, and last session was on Tuesday, so you did it in like five days. Uh, well, I probably shouldn't say what time it actually took. <laughs> All right, don't he has say. not slept. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so that's uh, why you had to sit down on the lock. <laughs> <laughs> in the character recovery. Oh my god. Uh, all right. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.